Hey guys, before we get into today's video, I wanted to let you all know that this Friday, May 14th at 2 p.m., I'll be in Phoenix, Arizona, playing at the newest poker room in town, Lone Butte. Specifically, I'll be in the 3-5 spread limit game, which as far as I know is pretty much like no limit, except there's a maximum bet of $500. Either way, it should be a good time. And for any of you guys out there who want to come join me, they've actually already got a list set up on Bravo where you guys can get on the board. So should be a good time. And I look forward to meeting at least a few of you guys there. All right, back to the video. What's up guys? Welcome back to my trip from the Midwest. This is part two. Part one was from Cleveland, Ohio, but today we're in a new city and a new state for the vlog, I believe, Detroit, Michigan. And man, it is so beautiful out here, but don't take my word for it. I'll just show you guys. I've heard a ton of things about how bad the weather is in Michigan, but I think I'm just running good because, man, can you ask for better weather than this? It's like 60 degrees. And right over here is Canada, believe it or not. Isn't that crazy how it's just a little bit of water between here and there? Apparently there are three major casinos in the area, Greek Town, Motor City, and MGM. Now, the first two, don't really have much action as far as poker goes. MGM, however, seems to be the spot for pretty much all your poker action. They have two five going on a regular basis, and hopefully today they have a five ten going. I mentioned last vlog that I'd be here today, but again, I'm pretty skeptical that that'll actually make any difference. Then again, in Cleveland, we did manage to get a five ten going, so I don't really know what to expect, but even if I end up playing two five, I think they have a thousand dollar max, which is plenty fine by me, and uh, should make for a good day. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now. Let's get to the casino and see what Detroit has in store for us. All right, guys, welcome back. Here we are playing some 2-5 No Limit at MGM in Detroit. Unfortunately, the 5-10 list wasn't quite long enough for the game to go. So in for $1,000 here in this 2-5 game. And in the first interesting hand, the button straddle is on for $10. And I look down at Jack-10 of hearts in the big blind. Small blind folds, I make it 35 bucks to go and only the button makes the call. So heads up here to a flop of 8-7 deuce with one heart. Seems like a good board to continue betting, so I put in $40 and my opponent makes the call. Turn card is the Queen of Clubs, and I think I want to size up here now, much like I would with value hands. It's also a board where my opponent shouldn't be too strong aside from either 8-7 suited or sets. So for that reason, I decided to continue with aggression. I put in $125, and this time it gets the job done as my opponent lets it go. In the second interesting hand, we see an open from late position to $15. The cutoff and button make the call, and then I look down at King Jack of Diamonds in the small blind. I like to raise it up here, given that the raise came from late position, and there's also some dead money from the callers. So I make it $90 to go, and get called by the initial raiser and the cutoff, but the button gets out of the way. So three ways here to a flop of Ace, Ace, Five, with one diamond. I wouldn't really hate a small bet here, but given that we're up against two opponents out of position, I decide to check it, and the action checks all the way through. Turn card is the three of diamonds, and I think once again you can go either way between betting small and checking. On one hand, betting seems good because it seems credible that an ace would play that way. But on the other, my opponents could easily have an ace that checked back the flop. So I decided to keep it a little bit simple and check it once again, but instantly regret my decision when the action checks all the way through again. So when the river comes off a of ten of spades, what I think is most likely is we're probably up against some weak pairs, possibly hands like pocket sixes through pocket nines, or I don't know, maybe a 10, possibly. So I decide to finally put some money in this pot. I'm not entirely sure how credible this is, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it got through either. 
but my opponents let me know instantly when the first player makes the call and then the second player raises it. All the way up to $450, which is going to bring an end to this King Jack adventure. And the player behind me lets it go as well, so we'll never know what they had. In the third hand of note, I straddle under the gun for $10, and the button, small blind and big blind limp in. I have 9-8 offsuit, not really looking to raise it up, so I just check it, and we go four ways to a flop of king 9-3 with two clubs. The small blind now leads for $20, big blind folds, and I decide to make the call here with middle pair. Seems like we could either improve on later streets or find some different ways to win this hand. So I put in the 20, and the button calls behind me as well, which I was kind of hoping would not happen, but... Here we are, three ways to a turn card, which is the ace of diamonds, and now the small blind checks it. Given the way the small blind has played this hand so far, seems to me like he's just got a weak king. So I decided to bet $50 and begin bluffing now, hopefully fold out the button and go heads up to the river against the small blind, who I perceive to have a weak holding. And that's exactly what happens. The button gets out of the way and the small blind makes the call. Off to a river card here, which is the deuce of clubs. Once again, he checks it over to me, and now it's time to carry out the final phase of this plan. I put in a bet of $150, much like I would with either two pairs or some flushes, but my opponent cares nothing about that because he snap calls. I flip it over, obviously not expecting to win, and indeed we're not going to win this one because the small blind flips over king five. And in the words of a wise man, just because you know what they have doesn't mean you get to win. Moving right along here, in this next hand the button straddle is on, small blind limps, big blind limps, and I look down in middle position at 9-8 of diamonds. Totally fine to just limp along, but looking to spice up this game, which has so far been fairly slow. So I raise it up to $50. The player on my left now makes the call, and everyone else folds. So not exactly what I had in mind going to the flop, but that's alright. At least we're heads up, so shouldn't get too complicated. Anyway, off to a flop here, which comes down Jack-7-5 with one diamond. And upon close inspection of the board, I realize we have what's called a double gutter. And what that means is it's just a two-way straight draw, but it's not an open-ended, I don't know, it's kind of confusing, but as you can see, any 6 or 10 would give us a straight, which is a pretty strong hand, so I like to continue betting for $60, but my opponent's not done with it just yet as he proceeds with a call. Turn is now the Deuce of Diamonds, one of the best cards we can ask for without directly improving. My opponent's got about $700 left, so even though I would typically size up on this turn card, I elect to just bet $150, so that way if he calls, we can set up a pot-sized shove. And it looks like it might come to that, because once again, my opponent makes the call. So with a straight draw, a flush draw, and fingers crossed, we're off to see a river card which does not help. It's the five of hearts, pairing the board and changing pretty much nothing. And well, I've got a big heart and a small brain, and for that reason I elect to go all in. For $600 effective, and it seems like it may work because he starts thinking about it, a few seconds go by, then about a minute, before eventually he decides on a fold, claiming he had pocket nines. At this point in the session, I hear some music to my ears when the floor staff announced that they're opening a 510 no limit, which is a $2,000 max, and that's what I decided to go jump into. So this next hand is going to be from a different point of view for that reason. And here we go, playing some 510. In this first hand, the button straddle is on, and I look down at h3 of clubs in middle position. I raise it up to $60, and only the button makes the call. So heads up here to a flop of king, jack, deuce with two spades. I like to continue for a small size, given that the board is fairly advantageous for a lot of hands I would have here. But the button doesn't really agree with that, as he makes the call. So we're off to a turn card here, which is the three of spades. Now we make a pair, but it does bring in a flush. Seems pretty unlikely that our hand is best here. However, I don't really want to continue betting when the flush comes in, so I check it and my opponent checks it back. River card is the five of spades, and given how this hand's played out, I could very easily have some high flushes here like the ace of spades or queen of spades, and my opponent seems to most likely be holding either a king or perhaps a jack. So, once again, it looks like I'm going to have to put some money into this pot and hope that my opponent folds. Unlike the previous hand though, there's no need to go too big on boards that have four of the same suit, so I just bet $90 and my opponent thinks it over for just a few seconds before deciding to let it go. So this one's getting through as well and we take down the first pot at 510. In the second hand, I look down at 6-3 of diamonds, raise it up to $30, probably questionable, but whatever, I'm on vacation alright. Guy on my left however decides that vacations are for losers and raises it all the way up to 100 bucks. Action folds all the way back to me, and obviously, calling a re-raise with 6-3 suited out of position is definitely in the bad category, so of course that's what I do. 
and we're off to a flop here which comes down queen 8 4 with two spades. My only disclaimer is that this player in particular had barely raised anyone pre-flop, so with a hand that's pretty face up as either ace king or a big pocket pair, I figured it'd be probably fine, but still, like I said earlier, just because you know what they have doesn't mean you know, okay, anyway. I check it over to him and he checks it back. Turn card is the four of diamonds, and now that we have a flush draw and a lot of hope, I think it's time to start betting. So I put in $65 and my opponent makes the call. River now comes the eight of diamonds. So we end up making a somewhat disguised flush, but the board is double paired. However, like I said earlier, this guy had been very tight and very passive. So given that he re-raised preflop, I don't imagine he would ever have an eight or a four in this situation. For that reason, I think it's more than okay to go for some value here and target either pocket jacks or pocket tens, or maybe even aces and kings that are trying to get sneaky, which doesn't seem likely, but just like I would with a missed straight draw or maybe some missed spades, I like to bet $300 and my opponent thinks it over for a while before eventually deciding on a fold and later told me he had pocket jacks. In the following hand, the button straddle is on, small blind folds, and I look down at pocket sixes in the big blind. I make it $60 to go and only the button makes the call. So we're off to a flop here which comes down jack eight four with two diamonds. I decide to check this one and he checks it back. Suddenly this hand gets a little more interesting when the turn comes the six of clubs. Out of nowhere, we make three of the same card. So I like to bet $90 and my opponent makes the call. Off to a river card here, which is the queen of hearts. Now I decide to go for a pretty big bet. I think you guys are starting to get the idea. I usually just bet big whether I have a bluff or a good hand. Super advanced concepts, right? So anyway, I bet $350 and my opponent thinks it over for quite a long time, about three minutes. But I'll spare you guys the wait and let you know that he ended up deciding on a fold, unfortunately. Kind of sucks that the last two hands were the first time I had value all day long, but couldn't manage to get paid off. And for the last hand of tonight, we're going to play the same holding that we had in the first hand, which is Jack-10 suited parts to be specific. In this one, the button straddle is on, so as per usual, I'm going to raise it up to $60 and get called by just the cutoff. So we're gonna go heads up here to a flop of ace, six, three with two clubs. This board seems pretty advantageous for me and he's gonna have a lot of pocket pairs that aren't gonna wanna continue with an ace out there. So I bet $85, but my opponent makes the call. So we're off to a turn card here, which is the four of clubs. Now that the flush and some possible straights come in, I decide to check it and my opponent checks it back. So now it seems like he's just got a hand like ace queen or ace jack, for example. So when the river card comes the eight of spades, given that this opponent had played fairly tight so far, and this board is a little bit scary, even for top pair, I decided to go for it. Not exactly sure if this is a good spot by any means, but this game had been so slow and everyone had been playing fairly tight. So I figured we could probably get some folds from these player types. So all that being said, I throw in a bet of $325, and for what seems like the 10th time tonight, our opponent goes in the tank, weighing his options, deciding what he wants to do, and what he wants to do is call, unfortunately. So I flip it over, and indeed, we're up against ace-queen offsuit. Kind of a reflection of how this session went, seems like the hand reading was fairly on point today, but that's about the only thing that was on point because... A lot of my plans did not work out. Anyway, after this hand, I decided to just wave the white flag and live to fight another day. Well guys, even I gotta admit, that was probably one of the most lame sessions ever on this channel. I uh, definitely didn't run very well. More importantly, I did not play very well and nothing really exciting happened. So, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I ended up only playing like five hours, but honestly just wasn't having that much fun and wasn't really locked in mentally at all. And I really had my mind on this back here, which is downtown Detroit. Sounds a lot more fun than sitting in this casino playing poker. Now, what's next for this vlog is back to California for at least a few weeks. And coming up in May, I'll be in Arizona playing some poker and vlogging there. And that's pretty much it until then, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you stuck all the way through to the end, even though it wasn't the most exciting of videos. Uh, if you gave it a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. And until next time, guys, good luck at the tables. Peace.